Barton Camp, one of my greatest uh, issues that I have had is not being able to come to China, not being able to come see you. And yet this year at Pentecost, I can't think of a better message to come into China. If there is a nation that is in worldview right now, it's China and will become more and more prominent over the next four years. And right now, I cannot think of a better message to bring to you than Pentecost. Now, let's begin. Let me remind all of us, we are living in a new era. Now, when you're living in a new era, that means everything is becoming new. New relationships, a better way of doing things. It can be something you've never experienced before. It can be surprises. This era is known as a Passover era. So every year at Passover, we're crossing into a new dimension of this particular decade. And we are experiencing the Lord in a way we've never experienced Him before. But also, one word that is linked with pay is Pentecost. It's a Pentecost era. So when you cross over at Passover for 50 days, lots of things are happening. You're counting the Omer until we celebrate Pentecost. And that's what I want to talk about today. We must learn to celebrate Pentecost every year and the spirit must gain access in a greater way over and over and over. Now, remember I called this year the Passover of promise. That means it's not crossing over and being just being redeemed, but it's you stepping into your inheritance. It's about revival in a time of war. We are living in a war season, but it's also about the Pentecost of power. We have to have power and strength to turn the battle at the gate. We have to have revelation. We have to move into this season with a voice. See, this era is about a voice that's coming out of your house a supernatural, mystical atmosphere that is we are contending for the authority of our atmosphere. You right now are determining the rule of your future and without the Spirit of God, you can't rule here in the earth realm. See, Father is on the throne. Yeshua is seated next to Father. By His blood, He is giving us access into Father to gain revelation, to gain anointing, to gain power. And then, because of that, the Spirit of God must keep us seated next to Yeshua so we're going in and out of that throne room because we're walking in a world that is very supernatural right now and a world filled with contention. So this is so key for us. And you want to understand nations, whatever nation you're in, whatever state you're in, whatever city you're in, we are in the valley of decision. How we make choices is how vision for the rest of this decade comes. So your will is very important. Your mind, your will, your emotions, and you must allow the Spirit of God to overwhelm all three. See, you have the Spirit of God dwelling in your spirit, man, and that His Spirit living inside of you, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, must be overtaking the way we think, the way we act and then the way we make choices. But also, this is a time of harvest. Pentecost is about harvest. Every feast, is about, feast time is about harvest because the Lord developed and has always attempted to keep a harvest mentality within our thinking. Stop right now. Put your hand on your heart, one hand on your head, and say, Think harvest. 
It is so key for us that we understand that. Now, we have also experienced at the beginning of this decade a divine pause. I believe that divine pause was to identify a new remnant, a remnant that was going to be overwhelmed, filled by the Spirit, and how the Lord was going to use this remnant in days ahead at, with a new order to enforce justice against evil that has formed in the earth realm. See, evil forms and evil establishes itself so that evil can rule in the earth. But God, when Yeshua came, shed his blood, went to hell, then uh, ascended into heaven while he was ascending, he gave gifts to mankind, and those gifts were to enforce that power he exhibited over the cross, at the cross, over the enemy. If Satan would have known what he was doing at that cross, he would have never done it, and now we, have, we are the enforcers in the earth realm. It's amazing. It's time to redeem this triumphant remnant in this season of war and recovery. And so the remnant must rise up. Now rise means that you are standing to attention to gain your next call for your mission ahead. I loose that over you right now. Now, with that, God has this order of restoration, prosperity, and breakthrough. Once we get in his order, once we get in his timing, all of a sudden we start seeing these three, these three elements of laws of his spirit manifest. Restoration, prosperity, breakthrough. I decree right now you will experience all of this as you press toward and into this Pentecost era. See, you have an inheritance. You have a portion. And what Satan longs to do is break in through the boundaries of your portion and take an upper hand. He wants the biggest portion of your portion. And I decree right now, by the Spirit of God, we are reinforcing our boundaries as we move forward. We are reinforcing them with the Spirit of God so that anything the enemy has gained a foothold in, he will pull that foothold. We will tear it down like when Dagon fell and uh, when the ark came before him. Every stronghold will fall. And I know this by the Spirit of God. When we forgive, his schemes have to break. And so I loose the spirit of forgiveness. See, Holy Spirit is a generous spirit. Holy Spirit is a forgiving spirit. When Yeshua blew on his disciples and shifted them into being apostolic in John 20, it said he gave them the authority to forgive. We have the authority to forgive. The result of forgiveness is breaking all the schemes of the enemy within our portion. Now, with that, we also want to know this year is a time to build. We've got a new church rising. We have not seen the church that will come into its full form during this decade, but that church is now arising as the remnant arise. And then we're going to see a church exhibiting, a church manifesting kingdom. And that is the call to you at this Pentecost time. At Pentecost, it is a personal call, it's a corporate call, it's a territorial call, it's a national call, and it's a generational call. So I decree right now that we are going to be building by the Spirit as we move forward. Now, we build individually, we build corporately, but there's an order. Judah has to go first. 
Praise has to rise up. There's a sound that has to come up through us. The sound of the spirit of praise. And when the Lord hears that, he inhabits the praises of his people. The Lord is ready to move. He's ordering his army. He, when he brought them out of Egypt, he brought them out by army. See, we don't see us as an army that is getting ready to come out. We are getting ready to come out in a way that the world will recognize us in a new way instead of wearing the reproach of the church from last season. We're coming out as an army with banners. And that is important for us to understand. Now, we're divinely being positioned with this new identity. You're looking good this season. You're developing this season. You're not who you were last season. Your voice needs to be reflecting what, who you are in the earth realm. The earth is crying out for liberty and we have to be loosing liberty into the earth. It's amazing what God is calling us to do right now. And all the way from this past Memorial Day here in America, which we celebrate those who fought and died for our freedom, into the 4th of July, into Veterans Day, we need to understand that we are now a new army, a new voice crying out for liberty. Whatever nation you're in, that same principle uh, applies if you're watching on the web wherever you are. Now, let's get to Pentecost because this week is a week that leads up to an incredible Pentecost time in a season of Pentecost. Pentecost is a harvest feast. It's, it, it's so key this year. It's a first fruit feast. That means how we celebrate at Pentecost, how we press through with the three elements of Pentecost, revelation, power, and increase, is how we will establish the harvest season ahead. And so I want you to enter into Pentecost, Shavuot in uh, Hebrew. It is a time of of celebrating harvest. It has a sound of harvest. It has a way that you enter in. And yet it is historical in nature. Now, let, let me remind you of first fruit. See, the thing that changed my life when I was 18, God spoke to me and said, I can restore all your barns. I can heal your body and your nerves out of Proverbs 3. If you will lean not on your own understanding, turn to me, submit yourself to me, and give me your first fruits. See, God has set up an order of timing built around three feasts. Feast. Our covenant revolves around these three feasts because he always wants us to keep a covenant mentality. And then in the midst of those feasts, there's a Rosh Kadesh moment in every month. And when you understand that, all of a sudden, and you operate in that first fruit blessing, it reminds us that God is the source of all our blessing. Before long, you have developed a mentality. Uh, it, it disciplines us or disciples us to seek his kingdom first. That's what Yeshua said. If you'll seek my kingdom first, everything will be ad added to you. It stirs us to remember that he is to be our first love at all times. It always will bring you back first fruits to first love. That was where the church strayed in one of the churches in the book of Revelation. He told them, return to your first love, Ephesians. It releases revelation that directs us with a wave offering every month. And then we hit a feast like Pentecost. And it is a total corporate celebration where we're waving our best and gathering and getting ready to harvest what's ahead. Gives us confidence. 
that Father will always provide. See, one of the things I saw, and I'm going to bring it to you in a moment, was a promise God gave me when I was 18. And as I developed first fruits, He fulfilled that promise. It causes us to have an expectation of visitation. It enters us into the process of watching our inheritance mature. Our promise is being fulfilled. See, it also reminds us that God is working on a final ingathering. See, if we don't have a harvest mentality developed within us on a monthly, yearly basis, we won't be watching carefully for that final ingathering that is going to come. I believe we are pro approaching that ingathering in a new way during this uh, decade that we're living in. We have to develop this harvest mentality. Now, I want us to look at Pentecost in three dimensions. First of all, I want us to revisit Mount Sinai. I want us to look at the power of the promise that was given and prophecy that was given to Joel. Then I want us to look at Holy Spirit, our advocate. See, Holy Spirit is a pay word. So this decade, there are spiritual dynamics aligning that is so important. Peresh kaf lamed alif. It means the one who ends the curse. The one who ends the curse that was first begun in your house. Right now, you need to stop and decree. Every curse that's been working against the blessings of my portion, Holy Spirit is coming in a new way. I love it. Now, with that, let's look again at Joel, the prophet. He was a restorated prophet. He, he knew that Israel had had big problems. Well, when we go through big problems, there's big redemption for us. Uh, and when you look through the book of Joel, you find several things happen. All of a sudden, God is speaking to the prophet Joel, and he's saying uh, there's an adverse sentence and a reproach that I am going to overthrow. I'm going to command the destroyer that has been destroying in last season to leave. See, there were four levels of the destroyer working, four different locust structures. And so the Lord said, now it's going to come a time where that's going to end you're going to prophesy, and those four levels are going to overturn. See, it's a process, our restoration. He also prophesies David's house will rise up again. Now, in this year of the house, David's house must rise up again. He says, I'm going to pour out a spirit of grace, a spirit of favor, and a spirit and supplication. He says uh, the former and early rains are going to come together. There's going to be a fulfillment of rain that causes harvest to increase. I'm going to fill your threshing floors. I'm going to replace and restore the four levels of loss. I don't have time to teach on those today. But the four levels of loss that tried to overtake you in your history, I'm now going to replace and restore that. Then he prophesies something. A new outpouring with prophecy, signs, and wonders is coming. A triumphant reserve will arise, and then multitudes, multitudes will become in the valley, will come to the valley of decision. Nations will have to decide how they're going to realign around covenant. That's the decade we're in. Now, let me go back to Mount Sinai for a minute. And let me explain something. See, we're restoring right now the covenant root and releasing the glory of God in our atmosphere. See, Pentecost is wrapped up in all this. It's about covenant roots. It's about the glory of God in the atmosphere.
It's about how, how the glory comes and not only rests on us, but lives in us. It's amazing. Now, let's go back, back to Mount Sinai. See, when the Lord brought them out of Egypt, even in the redemptive Passover, he started bringing them and then he stopped them and said, I'm going to have to instruct you. Therefore, Moses, you've got to come up here with me so I can give you instructions. I can give you the Torah and you can take it back to the people. And the people were to prepare themselves for this visitation back from heaven. Now, I think we're not clear on what that looked like. Remember, Moses stayed 40 days plus, and the people got all frustrated with it, and they went back to their worship in Egypt and built a golden calf with lots of the wealth that God gave them coming out of Egypt. They violated a wealth principle. And they used wealth in their worship in a way God never intended. Now, that's an important principle for you. I could teach on that whole thing right there. But this is what it looked like when Moses came down. And we'll show you this picture now because we think, Ten Commandments, we think stone, we think law coming down, we think even the Bible, it being like this. It wasn't that. God gave him living revelation, living revelation, just as John chapter 1 says, the word was alive and living. When God first gave that word, it was alive and living. It was filled with fiery letters, covenant letters. That's why Hebrew also is so important. It was, he gave covenant to Israel, fiery, life-giving words for their future. But when Moses came down and they were acting crazy like we, we tend to act here in the earth realm, all of a sudden, that all hardened. Moses had to go up again, and when he came down, it was stone tablets. It was written in stone. Something was going to have to happen to bring that stone living word back to life. Well, that's what Joel prophesied. Go back one and let's look at it. Joel prophesied there is coming a new outpouring with prophecy, signs, and wonders coming to you. You should be no, you should know that is a for sure prophecy. This word can be stoned to us. It can, the letter can kill us, but it's alive in some way. It's got to become alive in you. And when Pentecost, 3,000 years later came. Now listen to me. They celebrated Pentecost every year after they left Egypt. They did it legally. They did it religiously. But then Pentecost came after the Lord ascended. The Spirit of God came down. The very thing Joel prophesied happened. Lord, we have to see you do this again. We have to have the same power that came down. We, and that will replace and restore any loss we've experienced. It will revoke adverse sentences. It will re, he will remove reproaches. See, Holy Spirit came to live in the earth with us to cause our spirit to rise up and be seated positionally next to Yeshua so we have access. As long as we're here, Holy Spirit is giving us access into Father. When Pentecost, the event happened, the event 
after the Lord ascended with Peter preaching, all of a sudden, that life-giving power that God wanted Moses to bring back to the people came. Just amazing when you think about it. And right now, that life-giving power needs to come again. That life-giving power needs to break in again in our lives. That life-giving power needs to come and restore the covenant root of our lives, our bloodline, our nation. That life-giving power needs to weave this remnant together so they demonstrate the power of God. This feast is so important this year. And as you celebrate it, as you enter into first fruits, as you enter into the month of giving, ask Holy Spirit, to come back to where any curse began in your family and break its power. I bless you abundantly. The Spirit of God is ready to manifest in us again. He's here. He doesn't have to come like he did in that original Pentecost. He's here. See, Israel's still waiting for him to come. He's here. And once you experience his spirit, you can never be satisfied over anything else. I decree right now, you will experience his spirit. Father, I ask you right now, come, rise up within us. Let us know the laws of your spirit. Let us experience the person of your spirit. Let us know that we are the dwelling place for your spirit. Manifest again. Manifest again. They had waited for that promise. Gone to church, think about it, every, every year. Or had their celebration every year. And then finally he came. I decree right now, again, the Spirit of God will surprise you. I decree the Spirit of God will come and overtake the church in China. The Spirit of God will surprise China and change the course of the world. I loose that anointing and I decree now the manifestation will begin.